in the rugged terrain of ancient Europe, where dense forests and plains were the domains of creatures long extinct, lived the Neanderthal man named Grok. Grok was unlike many of his kin. While others were content with the simple tools of stone and bone for hunting and survival, Grok possessed a curiosity that drove him to explore and create. One crisp morning, as Grok wandered through the forest searching for prey, his eyes caught sight of a large animal carcass among the trees. Approaching cautiously, he found the remains of a mammoth, its bones scattered across the ground. With excitement and determination, Grok began to examine the bones, selecting strong and straight ones. Back home, Grok carefully cut and shaped them using a sharp stone, working tirelessly to fashion them into tubes of various lengths. He honed his craft with each cut and scrape, drawing upon generations of knowledge passed down through his tribe. His hands, weathered and calloused from years of labor, moved with precision and skill, shaping the bones into something more than mere hunting tools. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Grok finally held the fruits of his labor in his hands. A primitive flute, its surface bore the marks of his handiwork, etched with intricate patterns and symbols that spoke of a deep connection to the natural world. Grok brought the flute to his lips and blew gently into the hollowed end. To his amazement, a soft, melodic sound filled the air, echoing through the trees and stirring something deep within him. It was a sound unlike any he had heard, a magical combination of breath and bone that seemed to transcend time and space. From that day forward, the flute became a cherished companion of Grok, accompanying him on his journeys through the wilderness, aiding Grok in his daily life as a hunter and gatherer. With its enchanting music, he could soothe the fears of injured prey, lulling them into a sense of calm before delivering the final blow. He could also communicate with his fellow tribesmen from a distance, signaling his whereabouts or warning of danger with a few simple notes. In the hands of Grok and his kin, the humble flute became more than just a tool. It became a symbol of creativity, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. And though the passage of time may have erased their footprints from the earth, the echoes of their music still linger, whispering secrets of a forgotten age to those who dare to listen. Though this is merely a fictional story of what could have been the lifetime hobby of a Neanderthal, their interests in what we now call music is present in a number of archaeological sites. Archaeologists have discovered a 50,000-year-old prehistoric flute that can still produce sound today. Let's dive into the past skill of music making. What instruments, besides the flute, have been unearthed in archaeological expeditions? How far back do they date? How were they created? And like the use of bones from the mammoth, from what material were they created? Let's uncover the amazing inventiveness of our forefathers in the art of making the first music. Flutes were, according to some researchers' findings, common in prehistoric times. The three flutes found in the Hohollefels cavern in southwest Germany are one of our ancestors' instruments. The best preserved flute is 20 centimeters long, with five finger holes and two V-shaped grooves on one end that the experts believe the musician blew into. It is carved from the wing bone of a vulture. The remains of two other flutes, made from ivory, that the researchers summarized came from mammoth tusks. Another is a prehistoric instrument named the Neanderthal flute, made of carved cave bear bones, and it's still playable today. The Neanderthal flute is believed to be the oldest musical instrument found in the Divya Babe cave in Slovenia. Like we mentioned earlier, its estimated age is at least 50,000 years. In 1995, archaeologists found it in a cave close to the Idritsa River. Excavation leader Ivan Turk found the bone flute next to a fire pit that the Neanderthals formerly occupied. In 2015, musicologist Bob Fink described that the flute has four finger holes that create four different pitches. These pitches match four notes of the traditional scale we use in music today, the diatonic scale. The Slovenian National Museum is now the flute's permanent home. According to the museum's official description, it is known as the world's oldest flute. It has three damaged and two well-preserved holes in it. In addition to being the oldest Paleolithic flute currently found in existence worldwide, the Divya Babe flute is also the first to have been conclusively shown to have been crafted by a Neanderthal. Neanderthals, like our friend Grok, were the first of our closest relatives to make musical instruments, as far as we now know. The Divya Babe flute, as it is popularly called, 
is evidence that Neanderthals were able to engage in an abstract and distinctively human activity like making music. Nevertheless, the earliest musical instruments discovered to date are flutes. Another prehistoric instrument is the sea snail shell, also known as the Triton conch, which is made of naturally occurring elements that are fashioned into musical instruments to suit the purpose of the signal and ritual instruments. Examples of these instruments survive from ancient Eastern, Roman and Greek civilizations in South America and Greece. A mouthpiece may be placed at the pointed end of a spiral or inserted into the side with a sound ranging from high notes, small shell, or deep, booming tone, large shell. Meanwhile, numerous ancient musical cultures worldwide use simple musical instruments made of materials found in nature, such as stones. These naturally occurring stone instruments are pieces of reef that have eroded following their penetration by sea creature colonies. Next time you're at the beach, take some small rocks with narrow deep holes drilled into them and play some music by blowing across one hole while using your fingers to open and close the others. If it's not too much work, try the most natural thing to do in the world. Take a little stone in each hand and click them together in a rhythmic beat. The click sound will depend on the stone's size, shape and density. The sharper the sound, the harder the stone. Believe it or not, some big rocks were prized for the ringing noise they produced when hit. Many so-called ringing rocks are still in their original locations, and some have visible signs of being struck repeatedly over an extended period. If carefully selected, flat, rectangular stones with varying lengths might be strung together, arranged side by side in a line, and struck with wooden sticks. If each were chosen for a specific note generated, when combined, they would create an early marimba that, in the hands of a skilled player, would sound excellent. Later musical instruments, such as trumpets and horns, were traditionally made from animal horns. The earliest lip-reed instruments were most likely hollowed animal horns, such as those of antelope, sheep, goats and cattle. When agriculture emerged, horns became widely available and relatively easy to make. All that was needed was to drill a mouthpiece into the side of the horn next to the closed end or to cut off the end and carve a cushion mouthpiece. These kinds of horns are still widely used in many cultures and are played in sub-Saharan Africa. A ram's horn, for example, that has been carved and blessed by a rabbi is used to make a shofar, a key instrument in Jewish tradition. One ancient cow horn that had been cut was discovered during renovations in a public tavern in Connemara. Animal horns are most likely where the large cast bronze horns of the later Bronze Age and the sheet bronze trumpets of the Iron Age evolved from. We have dug deep into the sounds of the Stone Age and discovered a prehistoric flute dating back at least 50,000 years, among other early musical instruments. Artifacts such as flutes made out of mammoth and vulture wing bones and instruments built out of seashell and animal horns give a clear description of great human ancestors' creativity and inventiveness. The way they communicate, survive, and express through the use of music shows not only deep relationship interdependence with nature, but also a deep, if not basic, human urge to create and innovate. For these ancient echoes reveal in turn the early life of men and their never-fading mark in the universal language of music.